Hey everyone, building your own PC is no small feat. It can easily get overwhelming, especially with all the jargon or technical terms you may encounter when looking for computer parts. Graphics cards are just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to building your own PC. So in today's video, we'll provide a simple guide to AMD GPUs, particularly their naming schemes, and some things to consider when choosing a graphics card for your build. Now, if you're team NVIDIA, we also did another explainer for NVIDIA GPUs, and you can watch that as well if you haven't already. So without further ado, I'm Ose from Yugatech, let's dive right in. A graphics card also known as a graphics processing unit or GPU as we commonly know, is responsible for generating images that you see on your computer's display. The more powerful a GPU is, the better visual experience it can bring. Today, AMD offers a single line of graphics card called the Radeon RX, with the latest ones being the RX 6000 and the RX 7000 series. Radeon simply means the brand name which AMD has been using for a lot of years already. Whereas RX is the product line itself that you see in many generations of AMD graphics cards. Previously, AMD had the RX Vega series and the RX 400 to 500 series. And then there's the RX 5000 series, which introduced the RDNA micro architecture that has been developed up to the current RX 6000 and 7000 series. You may have heard of these so-called integrated graphics, GPUs that are attached directly to the computer CPU. This is more commonly found in laptops though for portability purposes. An integrated graphics card basically does the same thing as a, you know, standard GPU. However, the performance won't be at par. Now, that's another topic to look into maybe for another video. But for today's video, we'll focus specifically on graphics cards that are you know, the full size, the one you use in computers. Now, before we go into the naming convention, let's discuss some of the usual specifications to look for in choosing a graphics card. They're mostly the same as with NVIDIA graphics cards. And in case you didn't know, the higher the number usually means the better and of course, more powerful. A higher number of cores generally mean better performance. These are similar to CUDA cores of NVIDIA graphics cards. However, it won't be a direct equivalent. VRAM, which stands for Video Random Access Memory, is similar to RAM in smartphones. It's a dedicated memory within a graphics card storing and processing data for videos and graphics. It is usually described as GDDR followed by a number like GDDR6, which is the, currently the fastest type of video memory that's widely available in the consumer market today. Another important parameter related to memory is of course the memory bus. It's a pathway that enables data flow between the GPU and the VRAM. This is measured in bits per cycle and the wider the memory bus is, the better VRAM performance. For example, a 256-bit interface will marginally perform faster than, of course, a 128-bit interface. Other specifications like the display resolution, PCIe card bus, clock speeds, and even the physical dimensions of the graphics card itself are prominently shown on the spec sheet. These are also important to look into in the name of compatibility. For example, your graphics card can output up to 8K display resolution at 144Hz refresh rate, but your monitor can only handle 1080p at 75Hz. Then, maybe going for a cheaper GPU can match the display monitor specs. Of course, the alternative is always to buy a better monitor to match your newer GPU. Additionally, take note that most of the higher specs graphics cards today are usually physically larger in size as well. So there's that to consider too. So if you have a mini case, I mean, you might not be able to fit the newest GPU, especially the most powerful ones. Now we move on to AMD's GPU naming convention. Unlike Nvidia's GTX or RTX GPUs, AMD is a bit more straightforward. Take a look at our example for this video the ASUS Tough Gaming Radeon RX 7900 XT OC Edition 20GB GDDR6. Now that was a mouthful, but most of the listings that you will see in the market are named like this. Of course, you have the ASUS Tough Gaming as the partner manufacturer along with its brand name, the Radeon RX, and then the four-digit number, 7900. The first digit here denotes the generation, like we discussed earlier, this lineup started with the RX 5000 series in 2019, followed by the RX 6000 series in 2020. The 7000 series is the latest one released in 2022 and has long been overdue for a refresh, with reports saying that the new 8000 series is supposed to come out sometime, maybe this 2024. 
Meanwhile, the remaining three digits refer to the performance class. Again, higher numbers offering greater performance. In this example, the 7900 is among the top spec GPU variants of AMD. After that, the four digit number is followed by the suffix XT. It generally means it boasts even greater performance than its standard counterpart. There's even an RX 7900 XTX variant, which is the flagship variant in the RX 7000 series. Going back to the item name, you may have noticed the term OC. Now that stands for overclocked in the 20 gigabyte GDDR6 that describes the number of its video memory and its type. All right, here's another example, and we're looking at AMD's website itself. Radeon's GPU, particularly in the RX 6000 series, also have the number 5 to describe a slightly better performing unit as compared to the standard 0. So if you see something like Radeon RX 6750 XT, it's a high performing class graphics card with slightly improved clock speeds than its standard version. So there you have it, a short explainer on AMD Radeon GPUs. Having a bit of knowledge on understanding the spec sheets and labels will come a long way in navigating the GPU market. This makes it easier to match your PC build with a graphics card for your specific profession or gaming needs. So did we miss anything? Don't hesitate to share some of your own tips in the comments down below to make life easier for everyone. And before you leave, you may want to watch our 2023 guide to AMD and Intel CPUs right here. Again, if you enjoyed this video or found it informative, do drop a like and subscribe to our channel to watch more. Also, don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok. And of course, visit yougatech.com to stay updated with the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this has been Jose, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya!